Hello everyone, I'm Easy Peasy Medic here. Today in my video, I'll be continuing to talk to you all about the second topic of bleeding disorder, that is platelet disorders. If you haven't watched the clotting factor disorder topic yet, kindly check it out in the link description box below after watching this topic. First and foremost, right before I move on to today's topic, I would like to talk to you all a little bit about thrombocytopenia. Thrombocytopenia is a platelet count lower than 150 times 10 to the power 9 per liter. The risk of bleeding depends on the level of the platelet count. Take for instance, patient with severe thrombocytopenia which has a platelet count lower than 20 times 10 to the power 9 per liter is at risk of spontaneous bleeding. Patient with moderate thrombocytopenia which has a platelet count between 20 to 50 times 10 to the power 9 per liter is at risk of excessive bleeding during operation or trauma but low risk of spontaneous bleeding. Last but not least, patient with mild thrombocytopenia with a platelet count between 50 to 150 times 10 to the power 9 per liter has low risk of bleeding unless there is a major operation or severe trauma. Its pathophysiology of it are due to decreased platelet function and increased platelet destruction. Most patients usually have low platelet count after a preceding viral infection. In majority cases, affected patients develop widespread petechiae and purpura or superficial bruising. It can cause epistasis and other mucosa bleeding, but profuse bleeding is uncommon. Moving on to immune thrombocytopenia, it was previously known as idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura or immune thrombocytopenic purpura. The current term is acknowledging the immune-mediated mechanism of the disorder and that many patients have little or no signs of purpura or bleeding. Immune thrombocytopenia is the commonest cause of symptomatic thrombocytopenia affecting children aged 2 to 10 years and it is a self-limited illness in majority of cases. It is also defined based on its etiology, phases of the disease and severity of disease. For etiology-wise, primary immune thrombocytopenia is an autoimmune disorder characterized by isolated thrombocytopenia in the absence of other associated causes, while secondary immune thrombocytopenia includes all forms of immune-mediated thrombocytopenia except primary immune thrombocytopenia. For phases of the disease-wise, newly diagnosed immune thrombocytopenia occurs within 3 months from diagnosis. Persistent immune thrombocytopenia is occur between 3 to 12 months from diagnosis. Chronic immune thrombocytopenia is lasting for more than 12 months. For severity-wise, severe immune thrombocytopenia includes low platelet count and clinically relevant bleeding, while refractory immune thrombocytopenia occurs when it fails to respond after splenectomy and exhibit severe immune thrombocytopenia. Clinical features of immune thrombocytopenia are similar to those as thrombocytopenia such as the following, like petechiae and purpura, epistasis, gum bleeding, and subconjunctiva bleeding. Petechiae is defined as a pin head size and discrete lesion due to extravasation of red cells from capillaries. It is neither tender nor blanching. In majority cases, the disease is acute and self-limiting. Therefore, they can be managed at home and do not require hospital admission. Treatment is controversial, so most children do not need any therapy even if their platelet count is less than 10 times 10 to the power 9 per liter, but treatment should be given if there is evidence of major bleeding like intracranial hemorrhage and gastrointestinal hemorrhage or persistent minor bleeding that affects daily life such as excessive epistasis or menstrual bleeding. The treatment includes oral prednisolone, intravenous NTD or intravenous immunoglobulin. Sometimes splenectomy is useful in managing immune thrombocytopenia. Immune thrombocytopenia is a diagnosis of exclusion, so careful attention must be paid to the history, clinical feature, and blood flame. 
SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus, is one of the differential diagnoses of immune thrombocytopenia. Type, for instance, if the patient is younger than 5 years old and has no symptoms suggestive of SLE, autoantibodies are not required to do in the children. However, if the patient is elder than 5 years old, especially in female, and has symptoms suggestive of SLE like photosensitivity, butterfly rash on the face, stiffness of multiple joints, and the list goes on, we should definitely do autoantibodies such as lupus erythematous cells, antinuclear factors, and rheumatoid factors. Any atypical clinical features such as presence of anemia, neutropenia, hepatosplenomegaly, or mild lymphadenopathy should prompt a bone marrow aspiration to exclude acute leukemia or aplastic anemia. Next, abnormal platelet functions or platelet function disorder can also lead to platelet disorders. There are four major functions of platelet in primary hemostasis, including platelet adherence, platelet activation and secretion, platelet aggregation, as well as the interaction with coagulation factors. Other than that, drugs like aspirin and heparin also can lead to platelet disorders. Thank you for watching and letting me your ears. Please like and share my videos as well as subscribe to my channel. I will see you in my next videos. Bye!